Hi, digital meteorologist Bobby Corser with you here in the Storm Tracker 2 Weather Center. Uh, if you remember back to Wednesday, we had a tornado warning up in Pacific County, up on the southwest Washington coast. I want to dive a little bit more into coastal tornadoes. It is that time of year where we do see them form. Now, they're pretty rare, and we'll get into this here in a few minutes, but um, the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center says September, October, and November is kind of our second busiest season when it comes to tornadoes. We get them usually in the spring and the fall. That's when the atmosphere in the Pacific Northwest is the most dynamic, and that's where you do get funnel clouds and tornadoes. Now, this map here is a map of tornado warnings from 1984 to 2007. In that time range, we use what were called county warning based, uh, or they were county area based warnings. So if a tornado warning was issued for say, Clackamas County, which is highlighted here in red, the entire county would receive the tornado warning. Now, that did not mean a tornado was covering all of Clackamas County. It just means somewhere within that Clackamas County area, there was a tornado warning. National Weather Service finally kind of wised up to this saying this is not necessarily working weather-wise and for watches and warnings because somebody maybe in, uh, say, far uh, South Clackamas is not seeing anything and somebody say is up and boring experiencing the, the tornadic winds for example. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the tornado setup was that day when they did have the warning in Clackamas County but you get the gist where if somebody in one part of the county is seeing sunshine and another part of the, of the county is getting the torrential rains or strong winds of a potential tornado it can be very confusing. So in 2008 we went from a county warning set up to what's now known as a polygon warning. So this is what you do see uh, when we do have severe thunderstorm warnings or tornado warnings in Oregon and Southwest Washington. You're much more familiar with the polygon shape. We talk about in the business respecting the polygon. Well, now this is a much more focused area where people can pay attention to. It helps when you have your cell phone or EAS goes off. It's going to be set for just this specific area. So coastal tornadoes. Now, one thing that will does stand out instantly on this map is there's a lot of red on that southwest Washington coast and northwest Oregon coastline and we're going to jump into why that is. Like I said, this is our second kind of tornado season and we're going to be focusing a little bit more on that as we move this map now toward this area. Up until 20, 2014, we really had, had never had a tornado warning in this area. 2014, we had two of them happened on November 23rd uh, for Pacific and Waukiacum counties on the southwest Washington coastline. There were two warnings that day that were issued. Now you'll notice there's a bunch of warnings here. It's a total of 16 and that has happened since 2014. 10 of these polygons and 10 of these tornado warnings came on one day. Happened October 14th, 2016. Started really early in the morning at about 8 a.m. and from 8 a.m. till around 10.30 you had 10 tornado warnings issued up and down the southwest Washington coast and the northwest Oregon coastline. The strongest tornado that day was a water spout that came ashore and did EF2 damage in the town of Manzanita. We will look at that in a few minutes, show you some of the pictures of what happened. But the National Weather Service says that day they had that EF2 tornado with winds of 125 to 130 miles an hour did significant damage in that coastal town. Now, there wasn't a tornado with all of these warnings that made it ashore. There were probably water spouts that dissipated before it got to shore, but the radar signature looked good enough that the National Weather Service was confident that a war tornado warning was needed. So that's why you see all of these areas here up and down the, coast, uh, the coastal areas of Southwest Washington and Oregon. Now, again, 2016 was a big day, 10 warnings. In 2017, there were two warnings issued for Clatsop and Pacific counties and then another one in Wakayakum County. In 2024, we had one warning last year. That was on November 21st. That was for Pacific County, Washington. And then of course, what we just saw two days ago in Pacific County as well. That's the only tornado warning we've had on the coast this year. Now, one of the things that we do wanna look at is we wanna look at that individual storm that we saw on Wednesday. Dave Seleski was talking about it as the five o'clock news started and as you can see, there's a hook echo. This is very textbook for what we look at as meteorologists on radar to see if there is rotation and if a tornado warning is needed. 
the National Weather Service in Portland issued that warning and from based on radar, it looked very good. I'm gonna show you some of the other tools that we have here in the Storm Tracker 2 Weather Center that are exclusive to us here at K2. So it's one of the reasons why we use all these tools because we wanna bring this information to you. And there's some really new cool technology, but standard hook echo, this is what we see. You see this a lot if you follow tornadoes like in the plains or in the southwest and even the southeast it has that classic hook echo shape now this is a four panel that we look at different things so you're seeing four bits of information here it can be a little confusing so i'll walk you through it we're gonna go from top left to right and then down through the bottom first upper left corner is your radar signature this is what we just saw we have that classic hook echo so we know that there is most likely rotation. The panel now to your right says ro uh, rotation detection. This is the product that we get from Barron who provides our graphics and this is using data from the South Washington Coast radar that's located on Langley Hill. The areas of the green and the red indicate rotation. So the radar beam has cut through the storm and it is picking up raindrops that are being spun in the air. Some raindrops are going toward the radar, some are coming away from the radar. We'll look at that portion here in just a second. But areas of red on that rotation detection says that the atmosphere is spinning. So the radar is detecting that there are things in this storm that are rotating. And anytime that you get a really red signature like that, chances are there probably is good rotation. Now bottom left, you're looking at velocity. We also look at this product to see if there is rotation within the storm. We talk about seeing greens and reds or darker color greens and lighter color greens. That just means that the radar is detecting raindrops or hydrometeors moving quickly in an area within a storm. So this particular storm, National Weather Service said they had a gate-to-gate -gate velocity. That means they're measuring winds going toward the radar and away from the radar in a close proximity of around 40 knots. That was what they were saying. And we've heard now that even looking at other levels of the atmosphere that that wind speed could have been higher. So while we haven't necessarily confirmed that a water spout or a tornado was put down on this particular cell, all the ingredients were there. We know that there was rotation. We could clearly see that. We know that there was updraft, and I'll get to that part here in just a second. And then the last panel I wanna show you, which is the bottom right here, that is debris detection. The radars are so powerful that they can pick up things in the sky that are non-meteorological. So they're, I'm talking things that are not hailstones or snowflakes or raindrops. The radar can detect all of those and the radar knows what those look like in terms of a signature. We know what a snowflake looks like on radar versus what a hailstone versus a raindrop or even a large raindrop versus a small raindrop. Little color pixels that you're seeing there on the bottom right are things that are being lofted into the atmosphere that might not be meteorologically based. That could be grass, that could be dust, pollen, it could be portions of a home, could be rocks, could be uh, a roof that's lift off, lifted off of a building. I've even seen signatures that have seen automobiles come back as the car is lofted up by a tornado. But this panel here does not show me anything that looks like anything was lofted into the air. So that might verify the fact that we didn't necessarily see a funnel cloud or even a water spout. So that is a good thing. If there was little colors of dark blues that were close together in a clump or even bright, bright yellows in a clump, that would likely tell me that there was probably some type of debris that had been lifted into the atmosphere. One of the other cool things that we can do is we can take a storm and we can slice right through it. This is what we call a side view of a storm. We're looking at a volumetric scan. So when you've looked at a radar, you normally see it on a horizontal plane, right? It's two dimensional. You're looking down upon it. You see, you know, the rain move from west to east or east to west or any sort of direction. Now, our radars have the technology now to not only shoot in the horizontal, but the vertical. So instead of just having one plane, you've got two. So the radar beam comes out, hits the raindrops, comes back. So we have now taken that tornadic storm that was warned and we've cut it in half. So we're now looking at a side view. This is what the radar sees when all the information comes back. On this, you're looking now from the southwest to the northeast. You see that the storm has a bubble on the very top. That's above 30,000 feet. That tells me it's a very mature storm 
very mature thunderstorm, especially with this tornado warning on it. Now, it's about 30,000 feet. That's pretty good for a low-topped environment, which is what we had on Wednesday. Storms in the Midwest that are producing tornadoes get doubly as high. They can go up to 60,000 feet. So it's still pretty impressive to see this little supercell uh, have rotation on it. You can actually pick up when we go to the next frame here. Now we're going to be looking at it from the south to the north. You notice how everything is kind of sloping off from the west to the east? That tells me that there is rotation within this storm. It's not straight up and down, but it's rotated and it's off to the side. So that tells me that the updraft, which is where a tornado would have formed underneath it, had tilted. And that is indicative of another reason why the National Weather Service would have issued a tornado warning on this particular storm because you had a rotating updraft that was tilted into the vertical, which has the tendency to put down a funnel cloud, water spout, or even a tornado. We talked about what happened in 2016, October 14th down in Manzanita. I want to show you some of the photos of that day in just a handful. But this thing did a lot of damage. Again, it was an EF2 rated wind speeds of 125 to 130 miles an hour from the National Weather Service when they did their storm survey. Lots of damage here. You can see a uh, siding of a house has been ripped off. You see trees that are down. Firefighters are, are grabbing a mattress that appears uh, and pulling it off of the street. You see this power pole that is leaning to the side. Remember that as we look through some of these other photos. We'll come back to that power pole in just a minute. Some of the other damage was actually quite impressive. Again, trees knocked down. And it wasn't a straight line wind event, and we know that because there were trees on the block that were pointed in different directions in a very small area, which is indicative of spinning air. So trees were knocked down, lots of damage done. Another thing I want to show you here, this is a great photo of the tree damage. You see, obviously, one tree that is right in front of you, it's bent over, uh, snapped at the base. But look at some of the trees in the background. You see how they're just little matchsticks? They're no longer full trees. Those are ripped off. And you don't get that with winds that are kind of in a, you know, normally a straight line, say 30, 40, 50 miles an hour. You have to have very violent winds that literally just rip trees off mid-base. And again, 125 to 130 mile an hour winds will do that. I mentioned that power pole in that first photo I showed you. This is a zoomed out view of that. You notice how the front power pole directly in front of you to your left is standing. And then there's another one down the block that's still in the vertical but the one in the middle is leaning. That is indicative of a tornado. Very small, compact area of rotating winds. We've seen this happen, especially in the plains, where a tornado will hit one house, and the house directly next to it is completely fine, or minimal damage. And it's just what happens. You get a very tight gradient of wind that blows through with a tornado. It will do a little damage in a very small, confined area if it's small, or if it's very large, it will take out whole city blocks. But this tornado was especially small, and didn't do a whole lot of damage. So that's just to kind of look back at our coastal tornado history here in Oregon and to look at what we saw on that day, October or Friday, October 14th, 2016, down in Manzanita, where they had 10 tornado warnings.